Stars glimmered like candles in the trees. Moonlight silvered the farmhouse and orchard. And quietly, the magic of the night crept into the room where Flora slept and dreamed. What was that? It sounded as though there were a fairground in her garden. No, not a fairground, but a pony seemed to have stepped right off a carousel and into the orchard. Then her shutter banged and it disappeared. The pony disappeared. Flora thought she must have dreamt it all. Oh, to see that beautiful pony again. Flora slept fitfully through the rest of the night and was up and dressed early. Somehow, Flora knew she must be dressed and into the garden before the dew was off the grass. As Flora gobbled down her breakfast, her mother asked her to gather up some of the wind-fallen fruit from the orchard. Under one tree, the grass seemed trampled. And she knelt there to pick up the small green pears. One looked juicier than the others, so Flora popped it into her pocket to eat later. Then, in the grass, she saw what seemed to be the tiniest pear ever. But it looked like pure gold. Then, wonder of wonders, the moonlit pony stood beside her. Flora reached out her hand, and a tear dropped into her palm. To her amazement, she seemed to be flying. And then she found herself standing in a mossy glade within an enchanted forest. trotted the fabulous pony. Its rider was a young girl dressed in royal blue and gold. She wore the diadem of a princess. But to Flora, she looked like her own twin. She spied a man lurking in the trees. He must be a wizard, she thought, for his splendid clothes were changing into the rags of an old peddler who hobbled down the bridal path with a basket of fruit. Flora knew he meant to harm the princess, but only she heard his words echo on the air. Eat this pear, my pretty dear. My spell will last a thousand years. The wizard offered a pear to the princess, and she would have eaten it, but her pony, sensing danger, neighed a warning. <laughs> then he snatched away the pear and swallowed it whole. He reared, pawed the air wildly, then froze, dead like cold stone. My spell would break if for your sake a friend would dare to eat a pear. <laughs> 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 
The king in his castle heard the news and was very angry. He commanded that every pear tree in his kingdom be destroyed. My spell would break if for your sake a friend would dare to eat a pear. But they burnt them all! <laughs> Then, the king ordered the Grand Vizier to summon his daughter's fairy godmother. It seemed possible her magic might break the evil spell. the fairy godmother was unable to break the spell. She could only promise that the pony would survive the long enchantment and waken after a thousand years. And she warned that even so, the wizard would return and try to rekindle the spell. To console his daughter, the king promised to have a memorial built around the brave pony who had saved her life. As centuries passed, Flora watched. An army of Turks carried off the horse to use in their games. <laughs> then, as though Flora was turning the pages in a picture book, more centuries came and went. And the history of the horse was told as gradually it became a fairground pony. A dazzling carousel filled the pages. And at last, Flora could step into the picture. <gasps> oh, but how awful! There stood the wicked wizard, just as the fairy godmother had foretold. This time, Flora knew exactly what she must do. She remembered her pear, took a huge bite, the spellbinder fell to pieces. Happily, Flora climbed onto the pony's back. Slowly, the carousel began to turn and turn and turn. Gently, they touched Earth, under the very tree where the adventure had begun. Now it was very real. Flora knew she was not dreaming. She was not riding a fairground horse, all painted in scarlet and gold. This was a real pony. 
and this one was hers to keep.